Well, it was not easy going last week in the Big Easy on Monday Night Raw as the Judgment Day was met with the return of Seth freaking Rollins. The past coming back to haunt Finn Balor and most importantly, Damian Priest, the man who put Rollins on the shelf upwards of two months ago on the Raw after SummerSlam. Seth Rollins returning with a... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We need to get some cameras inside the Pfizer Forum here in Milwaukee. Something's going on in the aisle way. Let's see him punk and the WWE Champion, AJ Styles. Chaos at the beginning of Monday Night Raw. We'll see him punk, of course, might feel a little bit cheated out of the WWE Championship. Now, not once, but twice after the events of Bad Blood over a week ago. CM Punk getting his hands on Dominic this past Saturday at Halloween Havoc, but now has a score to settle with the WWE Champion AJ Styles and clearly is not waiting for his opportunity. He is making his opportunity. Well, you can't say this isn't condoned. Imagine all the times that AJ Styles has dropped CM Punk with sneak attacks inside of this ring. We've seen it time and time again. Well, I don't know who started this brouhaha, if you will, in the backstage area, but it has spilled out to Milwaukee in the opening moments here on Monday Night Raw. Oh no, Styles on the shoulders again. Go to sleep. Message sent by the Second City Saint. CM Punk making the trip to the Pfizer Forum with one thing in mind, getting his hands on the man who stole away the WWE title. Hold on. Well, I don't think we're done. Finn Balor, one half of the world tag team champions from behind. The alliance between AJ Styles and the Judgment Day in recent weeks. All the history between AJ and Balor. Balor coming out to make the save. Hold on. Numbers may be even. The legendary Seth freaking Rollins is back inside the Milwaukee Wisconsin Arena and he is getting his hands on Finn Balor. Rollins dropping Balor with a pedigree last week in the backstage area. Now the fight is here in the Pfizer Forum. Rollins has been waiting months to get his hands on these two gentlemen. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, you can throw Dominic in there as well. The Judgment Day that he was once aligned with stabbed him in the back after SummerSlam, and this is what it's come to. Rollins did not come to Milwaukee for a wrestling match. He came for a fight. Oh, wait, here's Damian Priest now making his way out here and leveling Seth Rollins in the aisle way. We have got to restore some order here on Monday Night Raw. Chaos has erupted in the first few moments here. Damian Priest now all over the man who dropped him with a curb stomp where these two men stand last week. It was Damian Priest who leveled Rollins with a south of heaven on the concrete floor back in the month of August. Rollins spending two months on the shelf only to resurface last week with retribution in mind. Obviously a partnership that has gone up in smoke and Rollins has not forgotten and has not letting the judgment day off easy. Bound to make the Judgment Day pay for their sins as these two men are taking the fight to similar concrete floor. Oh no, we are going out to the WWE Universe. We got to clear the locker room. We have got to restore some order here on Monday Night Raw. Well, a chaotic first few minutes here in Milwaukee, but later tonight here on Raw, who will be next in line to challenge the Judgment Day for the World Tag Team titles? DIY, Viking Raiders, they both picked up victories last week. They collide right here tonight on Raw. Plus a massive interpromotional six-woman tag team matchup. Raquel from SmackDown alongside Charlotte and Bianca takes on the champions Cora, Roxanne, and Tiffany Stratton. And we're not going to have to wait long for that contest. 
because it is kicking things off live here in Milwaukee. The following contest is a six-woman tag match. Introducing first from Knoxville, Tennessee, Well, Seth Rollins and Damian Priest during the intro making their way through one of the tunnels and brawl to the backstage area. Hopefully officials and other security can get them apart and can finally restore some order after a chaotic opening moment here on Monday Night Raw. Obviously tensions bubbling up back in the Raw locker room. And certainly the same can be said about the women's division not only here on Raw, but also on SmackDown. This six-woman tag team matchup featuring various intertwining stories, a lot of them having to do with what happened less than two weeks ago at Bad Blood. And it is a special appearance tonight from Thursday Night SmackDown superstar, former women's world champion, Raquel is on Raw. Bianca Belair and Raquel Rodriguez, the two casualties to the current champions, Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez, less than two weeks ago at Bad Blood. Roxanne Perez using the underhanded tactic of exposing the turnbuckle and using it against Ra Raquel Rodriguez to retain her championship. We talked about the confidence of Cora being rocked heading into Bad Blood. She called upon an old friend and sometimes foe. Roxanne Perez poisoning the mind of Cora Jade Cora pulling out that same underhanded tactic to defeat Bianca Belair. Back at our trip in Boston. Raquel and Bianca aligned tonight. And they have one all-star caliber player on their side. And from the Queen. Well, Charlotte Flair was hoping to finally go one-on-one -on -one with Tiffany Stratton last week on Raw. See who the true queen was here on the red brand. But as you can see, Tiffany Stratton trying to get the jump on Charlotte Flair. But when Tiffany realized that Flair was ready to play, Stratton left the damn building. At least we thought. Bianca and Cora had come rolling from the backstage area into the ring. Bianca laid out by the Queen of the Ring winner, the current number one contender for the women's title. Stratton saying, Bianca, you might want Cora Jade, but that's my business, and you're getting in the way of the championship opportunity that I earned. It's time. Developing stories here on the Red Brand. Bianca Belair's pursuit of the championship. As much as she wants that gold, it's gonna have to currently be on hold because of that woman, the 2024 Queen of the Ring winner, who finds herself in a precarious situation tonight as she teams up alongside her Survivor Series opponent, Cora Jade, will defend the Women's Championship on Saturday night, November the 16th, against the buff Barbie, Tiffany Stratton. But will they be able to coexist here in Milwaukee? Common enemies breed strained friendships. And here comes the women's world champion. And from Laredo, Texas, the WWE Women's World Champion, Roxanne Perez. Well, I'm sure Roxanne Perez thought she put Raquel Rodriguez behind her for good at bad blood but the blood literally boiling out of Boston and all the way to Milwaukee here tonight. Roxanne Perez set for a one-on-one -on -one matchup against another superstar who wants to get their revenge on the champion, that being Zoe Stark. That is this Thursday night on SmackDown. But Roxanne Perez poisoning the mind of her friend Cora Jade. We saw a different side of Cora at Bad Blood. Roxanne Perez to blame for it. Now the champion stands side by side along the Queen of the Ring winner. Certainly a cohesive trio, it seems to be. To 
Japan, from Chicago, Illinois, the WWE Women's Champion, Cora Jade. Well, as you can hear, Milwaukee, Wisconsin certainly showing their displeasure for the actions of Cora Jade. Cora's confidence was rocked. Bianca Belair had defeated her in singles action in the past. When the championship was on the line at Bad Blood, she called upon Roxanne Perez, and the story wrote itself. Cora J did not give a damn how she got the job done. An exposed turnbuckle. The assistance of Roxanne Perez. It all led to the retention of her championship, and now she awaits another opportunity to retain that gold at Survivor Series. Her and Tiffany Stratton better be on the same side tonight because they have one strong alliance opposing them. Massive interpromotional six-woman tag team matchup kicking things off here on Monday Night Raw. Bianca Belair and Tiffany Stratton, no strangers to each other. They have fought on two occasions this year. Tiffany Stratton owns a victory over Bianca Belair via count out. Bianca owns a victory over Stratton via pinfall back in the month of July. Now they cross paths again after their exchange last week. Stratton laying out Bianca Belair and unintentionally really assisted the woman she fights for the championship at Survivor Series in Cora J. There you see the tag from Champion the Challenger. Maybe a respect between Stratton and Cora J. God only knows, but obviously Bianca Belair does not give a damn about Tiffany Stratton or even Roxanne Perez. Bianca wants to get her hands on Cora and finally win back the title. She's got a little for the prodigy that time. You know, Cora, Roxanne, and Tiffany Stratton, those are three women who have taken WWE by storm throughout this year. Coming out parties for all of them. The WWE Women's Champion Cora Jade Getting the fight dished out by Bianca Belair. There's a tag made to Charlotte Flair. Charlotte and Cora get exchanged for the first time. But the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez, the queen of the ring winner, Tiffany Stratton. Three ladies who have proven their worth, whether it's been right here on Raw or over on SmackDown throughout 2024. But now they run into common enemies tonight. You can only push your weight around and get things going your way so much in this industry. Eventually, things are going to come back to haunt you. Just ask the Judgment Day when dealing with Seth Rollins the last two weeks. Charlotte Flair, I'm sure, is waiting to get her hands on Tiffany Stratton. Didn't seem like there was any tension really there. No, no bad blood between Charlotte and Stratton. Seemingly, all Flair wanted was a competitive bout against the Queen of the Ring winner. Stratton showing no interest in... We saw what happened last week on Raw. Now here's Raquel Rodriguez. Back on the red brand for the first time in over two years for this interpromotional fight. Tag made to Roxanne Perez and the two SmackDown superstars taking center stage here on Raw. And unfortunately for Raquel, this thing's picking up right where bad blood less than two weeks to go left off. Raquel also dealing with the Kabuki Warriors, EO Sky. Asuka, Kyrie Sane, this past Thursday night on SmackDown. Unsuccessful tag team matchup alongside Zelina Vega. Another situation developing there, but Raquel Rodriguez, another woman who has proven herself throughout 2024. We've seen her in the line of fire, as, whether it's been as a champion or challenger, many a times throughout this calendar year. I'm sure a victory for Raquel tonight. Might just find her one more opportunity at the Women's World Championship. Cora trying to get a shot at Raquel. Raquel outrunning her. Raquel is going to be savoring in every shot she gets to dish out to the Women's World Champion on this Monday night in Milwaukee. There's some separation created by the Prodigy, who again looks ahead to a singles matchup against another woman she cheated out of victory two weeks ago on Velocity. That's Zoe Stark, that rematch coming up this Thursday night on SmackDown from Raleigh, North Carolina. Raquel Rodriguez hoping to be a difference maker alongside her two Raw superstars. Unfortunately, the women's world champion in control for her trio. Notice how Roxanne brung this fight to her territory as she continues to mount some offense over Raquel, keeping her far away from Bianca and Charlotte. Roxanne Perez all over Raquel Rodriguez, and there's a tag to the queen of the ring, Tiffany Stratton. 
Stratton and Raquel, no strangers to each other. Unintentionally seeing a rematch of the Queen of the Ring Finals. A tournament that Raquel fought through three rounds in, only to be turned away by Stratton in the main event of Madison Square Garden last month. Bianca breaking things up that time, nearly saw victory. Did Tiffany and the champions. Stratton and Cora Jade, if there is any mutual issues, putting them aside tonight ahead of their women's championship ballot Survivor Series, looking to get rid of some common enemies once and for all in Bianca, Raquel, and Charlotte. There's a tag much needed to Bianca Belair back inside the ring with the woman who laid her out last week in the center of the universe, Tiffany Stratton. Stratton showing last week she wants the spotlight on her that Bianca Belair will not interfere on her path to becoming the women's champion. Bianca not going to let that slide, dishing out some punishment to Stratton. Unfortunately, this matchup is not over yet. Oh, Bianca may be looking to get a little bit more closer. Face first, looking to rearrange the good looks of Tiffany Stratton. Stratton still in this matchup, Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade. Certainly two women who show they're not afraid to get their hands dirty in the means of success. Still almost in disbelief with what we saw out of Cora Jade. Somebody who, yes, has been lucky over the last few months, but has still fought in a competitive spirit and has rose to the occasional Monday Night Raw. And for Cora Jade's confidence to be so rocked and for her to be so desperate to make sure she did not lose her women's championship at Bad Blood, to call upon Roxanne Perez to watch her back and to use Perez's own trick against Bianca, absolutely shocking efforts. You're going to talk about some retribution at hand. Here's Charlotte Flair inside the ring with Tiffany Stratton for the very first time legally in between the ropes. Saw that brawl last week and Stratton walking out of what was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup between these two women. For whatever reason, Tiffany Stratton not interested in those affairs, only looking to focus on the women's championship as she tags in the champ. Stratton's day is going to come where she is going to have to stand across from the Queen Charlotte, the original queen, if you will. In singles competition, but it may be an unsuccessful outing for Charlotte here in Milwaukee, not just yet. There's another singles matchup that I'm sure the world would love to see. Cora Jade, Charlotte Flair, one-on-one -on -one here on Monday Night Raw. There's Cora taking a cheap shot at Raquel. One for a rival in Bianca. Left her wide open as Charlotte comes from behind. Monday Night Raw Women's Division continuing to heat up over the last month with additions like Lyra Valkyria, Jade Cargill debuting last week, and of course the return for the first time in over two years of Charlotte Flair last month. Flair has been looking like she never lost a step back to step into the ring with all the new competition that Raw has to offer, back to win championships. Tag made to Strat and tag made to the EST. Bianca Belair looking to bring this matchup past the finish line as she squashes Stratton in enemy territory. It has already been a chaotic night here on Monday Night Raw. We saw how we went on the air with the brawls between CM Punk, Seth Rollins, the Judgment Day. And now all this turmoil in the midst of this six woman tag team contest. Bianca showing Stratton that she is the roughest, the toughest, and the strongest that Raw has to offer. Now tagging in, maybe the strongest that SmackDown has to offer in the former Women's World Champion, Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel, during her reign as champion, defeated the likes of Shayna Baszler, Asuka, Io Sky. Perez was the kryptonite to Raquel, forcing Raquel to fight an emotional battle back at SummerSlam, stabbing her in the back. That friendship going up in smoke. Now Tiffany Stratton has got Raquel looking up at the lights of the Pfizer Forum. I'll tell you what, for Stratton and the champions, victory is of the utmost importance tonight. Rid themselves of their problems. With Raquel and Bianca and Charlotte, send them all to the back of the lines. Allow Cora Jade and Stratton to focus on each other and have that matchup at Survivor Series. And I'm sure Roxanne looking to move on to greener pastures on SmackDown as well. Things keep up. We may be heading towards that reality. Stratton going for a moonsault. Nobody home. 
Raquel Rodriguez still with some fight left in her. Bringing some distance once again. Stratton may be caught up. Oh, man. Neck breaker swinging her out with it. And you got to believe this one would be over if it weren't for the women's champion, Cora Jade. Other tag made of the Queen Charlotte Flair. Flair now looking to get her hands on the woman who attacked her last week. Oh, no. I think we know what the original Queen Charlotte Flair is looking to do to the Queen of the Ring, Tiffany Stratton. Figure eight locked in. Strat is suffering that neck breaker moments ago. And now a dangerous submission hold for the veteran in Charlotte. Stratton trying to find a way to escape she might have. Creating a little bit of distance. Enough to get that shot right to the jawline of Charlotte Flair. And now it's Tiffany Stratton who's got Flair in a precarious situation. Another tag to the women's world champion. Roxanne Perez, who continues to beat down on Charlotte. And you are really looking at a variety of superstars who have been the centerfold of the women's division, whether it's this year or previous. Perez, Cora, Stratton, three women who have been focal points throughout 2024, have proven their worth whether you like their attitudes or not. Charlotte Flair, who has been there, done that, been in the main event of WrestleMania, held championships all across this industry. Now is back to do it all over again. Roxanne Perez looking for a monumental feather in the cap alongside Cora and Stratton. Tag made of the champion. Tag made to Bianca Belair. Bianca and Cora back where they were throughout this matchup and, of course, at Bad Blood. Respect has gone out the window. This thing is now personal. Bianca, face first goes Cora. Stratton breaking things up. Tiffany Stratton wants Bianca Belair out of her crosshairs on her road to Survivor Series. Bianca giving some back to Roxanne Perez. Well, here's Cora from behind. May have given Cora a window of opportunity for some R&R. &R. Reversal by the EST. Oh no, Cora in trouble. K.O.D. to the champion. Tiffany Stratton looking on. Does not want any of that work. Roxanne Perez is too late. Bianca has pinned Cora Jade again. Unfortunately for Bianca, every time she's pinned the champion, the title hasn't been on the line. But it's these victories that are keeping Bianca Belair in championship conversation. Massive six-woman tag team victory to kick things off here on Monday Night Raw. What an exciting way to kick things off on Raw. And ladies and gentlemen, we're getting some breaking news. This night is 4-4 four, four from over. In your main event, the Second City Saint, CM Punk, will go one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever against one half of the World Tag Team Champions in Finn Balor. That is right here tonight in Milwaukee on Monday Night Raw. When the tension rises and the war on the battlefield begins, there is only one thing for these superstars to do. Survive! Coming your way on Saturday night, November 16th, for the Kia Center in Orlando, Florida. Witness the 2024 edition of the Fall Classic as the superstars of Raw and SmackDown, along with No Nation Gaming channel memberships, proudly present Survivor Series! We are back live in the Pfizer Forum, and I believe there's some dogs barking in Milwaukee! 
The Miz drawing an unlucky straw. He's going to have his hands full with the unpredictable badass Mr. Money in the Bank, Braun Breaker. Ron Breaker finally putting the Harbinger of Doom carrying Cross behind him. Less than two weeks ago at Bad Blood, closing the casket on Cross in the downright brutal casket match that was. And now Braun Breaker, the man who holds all the power, Mr. Money in the Bank, I think can finally really focus on the contract he won all the way back in the month of July. Those issues with Cross keeping that man distracted for quite some time, but now Braun Breaker looks to venture down new pass here on Monday Night Raw. The Miz going one-on-one -on -one with this unpredictable badass here in Milwaukee. Would it remind you of the action that's been going down each and every Sunday in Midtown Manhattan? It continues this Sunday, the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. Chad Gable one-on-one -on -one with TNA legend Frankie Kazarian plus the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne up against the Cruiserweight Champion Tyler Bate in another quarterfinal matchup that is going down this Sunday live at 12 noon Eastern time. Ron Breaker back in action here. And I think this is the most, or I should say, least personal battle that Breaker is finding himself in in literal months. Those issues with Kerry and Cross dated all the way back to the month of May. And Ron Breaker finally putting them behind them just a few weeks ago in Boston. Now is here for some competitive action and just looking to see what is next for himself here on Monday Night Raw. A lot of that may have to do with the briefcase he has been carrying around since July. A-list superstar The Miz knows a thing or two about that money in the bank. He has held it in his career and has cashed it in successfully as well. Oh, wow, what a counter by Miz. Breaker looked to be going for that signature Frankensteiner. Miz had it scouted from a mile away. And now The Miz is looking to give Breaker a fight. It's been quite some time since so we've seen The Miz have some true success here on Raw. Upset the Intercontinental Champion Dominic Mysterio in non-title action last month. Did not lead to much for The Miz as he was the first out in a gauntlet one week later. But now The Miz looking to create some new momentum as he gives Braun Breaker something to eat with a pair of boots. The Miz hyped up. Proud of his own efforts. Better keep his foot on the gas because Braun Breaker is just a different animal. Karrion Cross was reminded of that firsthand. Back at bl bad blood, excuse us. And matchup saw a shovel instituted, a brawl all around ringside. Carrying Cross dumping Breaker on his head time and time again, but still, Mr. Money in the Bank was able to outlast. And the Miz looking to put this thing away off a series of kicks. Maybe he stunned Breaker, not just yet. All about finding some new momentum for himself here on Raw. Ron Breaker just again looking to see what path he is going to travel down next. This better not blow to this audience too much. I don't know if he's familiar with Braun Breaker's game because Braun Breaker cannot be taken lightly. Miz has had loads of success throughout his career. Make no mistake about it, but it's been quite some time since he's seen it. Braun Breaker, on the other hand, has put together a hell of a resume in just 2024 alone. No doubt his best year of his WWE career. Spear on the Miz! Miz let up for just a second. Braun Breaker has no remorse. What a victory! Here is your winner, Braun Breaker! Well, Braun Breaker showing the Miz that he's got that dog in him, and he can pounce any given moment. Oh, wait a second here. There's Seth freaking Rollins backstage and Kevin Owens. Well, no shortage of history this year between these two men. Oh, well, wait a minute. Rollins extending a hand to Owens, maybe to bury the hatchet. And it looks like Kevin Owens isn't inter interested. Well, nonetheless, 
It is time to determine the number one contenders for the World Tag Team titles. Will it be DIY? Will it be the Viking Raiders? We find out live up next from Milwaukee. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way exclusively each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on velocity. Competition at an all time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of velocity. We're back live inside the Pfizer Forum. Who will become the number one contenders to the Judgment Day's World Tag Team title? We find out right here, right now. Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders, returned to tag team action last Monday night on Raw and picking up a victory against Aikman Rezar of the Authors of Pain. And last Wednesday on Velocity, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano met with the task of going 2v2 against Brutus and Julius of the Creed Brothers. War of Attrition over on TikTok, but DIY were able to secure the, secure the win. And now tonight, they are both in line for a championship opportunity, but only one is going to break through the glass ceiling and earn it. Will it be these Viking behemoths in Eric and Ivar? Or will it be the underdogs in Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano? All remains to be seen, former World Tag Team Champions on both sides of the ring tonight, but who is going to revisit success here on Mondays? Tommaso Ciampa in trouble, double team! That behemoth known as Ivar squashing Ciampa on the canvas. And speaking of velocity, tag team action last week and tag team action this Wednesday. The unholy union of Alba Fire and Isla Dawn going 2v2 against Lyra Valkyria and Mi Chin. Developing issues there, and they're going to come to a collision this Wednesday only on the No Nation Gaming TikTok, exclusively on Velocity. Tommaso Ciampa in all kinds of trouble. It has been one-way traffic since the opening bell. Eric and Ivar are looking to eat Tommaso Ciampa alive here in his hometown of Milwaukee tonight. And it was last November in this very building that Tommaso Ciampa went one-on-one -on -one at the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus picked up a huge victory that propelled him onto a WWE Championship matchup at Survivor Series. Twelve months now, it is Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano back together in Ciampa's hometown of Milwaukee, and they're looking to secure number one contendership for the World Tag Team titles. And we discussed it in great lengths on Velocity last week. DIY of Really been the kings of the green brand. Picking up tag team victories, as we mentioned, against the Creeds, against Pretty Deadly, Cedric Alexander, Ashante the Adonis as well. DIY, no strangers to the Judgment Day. They have met that tandem before, but they are looking for their next go around to house the world tag team titles. Easier said than done when you were in there with Eric and Ivar. Another set of former world tag team champions upwards of two years ago here on Monday Night Raw. Eric down and out for a couple of months with some nagging injuries. We saw Ivar in a series of singles competition here on Raw, but tandem action, clearly where these two men work best. Now looking to rediscover success on Monday Night Raw. Johnny Gargano, double springboard, head scissors takedown. And it's been an action-packed night here in Milwaukee, and Johnny Gargano looking to continue to move a mile a minute. The speed, the agility, and the resilience of DIY going to be their strong suits that they need to lean on against the strength, the size, and downright intimidation of Eric and Ivar. Gargano exploding out of the corner again. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa split apart in the 2023 draft, brought back together in the 2024 draft. Have found some success, have found some failure, but they do what they always do, and let's do it their way. Gargano and Ciampa looking to get back to the promised land. Double team maneuver, Tommaso Ciampa float over into the bridge. Almost had this matchup. 
DIY, you're gonna need to institute some more punishment on these Vikings and find a way to keep them down. Eric and Ivar prepared for war here on Monday Night Raw. Oh no, there's the strength that we talked about. Well, Akam and Razor, the authors of pain. That is no easy task. But Eric and Ivar were able to accomplish it last week. Who's to say they can't get through DIY now tonight? Eric almost getting caught. Champo using his momentum against him off the sunset flip. Now it's Eric who's trying to find a way back into this matchup. A psycho knee right to the jaw. Good night. That's one way to get back in this contest. And Eric not even going for the pinfall just yet. Tags in Ivar. Oh no, we saw this last Monday night. Champa about to get sent right through the ring. Double power bomb. And if it weren't for Johnny Gargano, this matchup might be over with. I don't think Ivar's got any problem rubbing some salt in the wounds of a man once called the Blackheart. Oh no, Ivar scaling the ropes. Tommaso Ciampa desperately crawls to his corner, makes the tag to Gargano only to get leveled. Damian Priest and Finn Balor, along with the Judgment Day in general, making a lot of enemies here on Monday Night Raw. Seth Rollins, CM Punk, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Hell, Roman Reigns, you go back to the season premiere last month. Really, the list goes on and on. The Priest and Balor, Gotta remember that they house the World Tag Team Championships all the while, and one of these two teams is gonna get added to that list of enemies. Johnny Gargano and Ciampa looking for that opportunity to go their way. Gargano once again uses his speed to put him back in the driver's seat. On the middle rope, Ivar just looking to catch this man, but the whole shebang has got different plans. Only a one count that time, says referee Rod Zapata. Johnny Gargano, this time last year, was competing in the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, made it all the way to the finals. We talked about what Ciampa was doing 12 months ago. Now these two men looking for top contendership. Holy hell, that may be the biggest and most destructive Project Ciampa I've ever seen. And again, this one might be over with if it weren't for the illegal competitor still being on the soles of their boots. The DIY realizing that they got these Vikings hurt. Ivar rolling to the outskirts, trying to get some R&R. &R. DIY looking to close the gap. Suicide dive by Gargano. DIY will do absolutely anything. Will leave no stone unturned, put their bodies in harm's way if it means finally earning number one contendership for the World Tag Team titles they once held. Organo starting to unload on Ar Ivar. I don't know if he wants to break things down to a brawl with one half of these Vikings. My goodness! For the biggest project champ I've ever seen and one of the biggest springboards. And now Ivar looking to once again level Johnny Wrestling. There I say, it might be a good time for Ivar to make a tag. I know he is a behemoth. I know he's a big man. There you go. He has taken a lot of damage the last few minutes. Tag made to Eric. One made to Tommaso Ciampa. Fresh legs on both sides of the ring. Off the discus forearm, now it's Tommaso Ciampa with a corkscrew to the outside. Not something you normally see out of Ciampa, but again, not looking to leave anything behind in pursuit of number one contendership. Do not want to wake up on Tuesday morning regretting what could have been here on Monday night. Eric now caught in the crossfires, and dare I say, DIY is really starting to take over. There you hear the appreciation for this sold out crowd in Milwaukee, Tommaso Ciampa's hometown in the middle of the Pfizer Forum. DIY looking for a successful outing, but if Eric starts to mount a comeback, that might be wishful thinking. Tommaso Ciampa once again finds himself in enemy territory. 
The exact opposite of what is going to bring DIY success here tonight. Look at Eric. He ain't getting pretty. He's just going effective. Told you a few minutes ago, breaking things down to a brawl with these two Vikings is about the last thing I would do if I'm DIY. You saw Eric breaking things down moments ago, and look how it benefited them. Ivar tagged in, feeling rejuvenated. Champa cuts him off. Goes right to the abdominal, trying to make Ivar gasp for air. Tag made to Johnny Gargano. DIY delivers me in the middle. Gargano into the cover. Eric still on his feet and breaking things up. Oh, Gargano. Got a little something for Eric that time. Now he's got his eyes locked on Ivar. Drop toe hold. Dare I say Ivar is hurt and Ivar's in trouble. Gargano escape locked in. DIY is number one contenders. An incredible, resilient performance out of Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa surviving these destructive Vikings tonight. A war of attrition sees DIY secure top contendership. Well, topic of discussion has been the World Tag Team titles, but we look forward to next week in Columbia, South Carolina, where it is gonna be a championship night on Monday Night Raw. The Judgment Day's Dirty Dominic Mysterio has been at odds with Big Brunson Reed, and next week, Reed gets his opportunity. The Intercontinental Championship will be on the line when the Big Aussie meets the Judgment Day's Dirty Dom. And Cora Jade has got a pit stop on the road to Survivor Series. She wants Tiffany Stratton. She's going to have to survive Bianca Belair. No Roxanne Perez, no Stratton, no nobody, as this matchup will be contested inside the confines of a solid steel cage. The gold's on the line. Bianca and Jade clash once more next Monday night. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. Well, it has been a jam-packed night here in Milwaukee, and it's looking to be a busy occasion next Monday in Columbia, South Carolina. But we still got a main event on hand as one half of the World Tag Team Champions, the Judgment Day's Finn Balor, is set for a first-time-ever bout. Chaos opened the show, and now these two men meet at the bottom of it. CM Punk has had looming issues with the Judgment Day dating all the way back to the month of May. They have been reignited in recent weeks, especially thanks to Dirty Dom and their involvement with the WWE Champion AJ Styles. Finn Balor aiding AJ earlier tonight, and now it leads to this high-profile main event in a loud and proud Milwaukee. Well, CM Punk got his hands on Dirty Dominic Mysterio this past Saturday for No Nation Gaming Channel members at the Scope in Norfolk. What a street fight it was at Halloween Havoc Night 2. CM Punk victorious in his outing against Dirty Dom, but now one-on-one -on -one with Finn Balor for the first time ever. And I'll tell you what, 
CM Punk clearly is ready to get his hands once again on AJ Styles and try to win back the WWE title that he was never pinned for back at No Mercy in September. But recent weeks have shown that just as the Judgment Day looms, it'll only create more issues regarding CM Punk trying to get that gold back. Nonetheless, here we are at the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee. CM Punk one-on-one -on -one with the Prince, Finn Balor. And after what we saw earlier tonight, you gotta believe Punk isn't ready for this matchup to start with collar and elbows and wrist locks. He is hot out of the gate looking for a fight. Finn Balor gonna get, wonder what's going through his mind as alongside Damian Priest as well. Finding out moments ago, their next number one contenders for the world tag team titles, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa await. As we talked about, the Judgment Day's roster of enemies continues to grow. CM Punk is one of them, and they are looking to take care of it once and for all here in the main event. Then Balor's submission hold locked in. This cross face on Punk trying to pass out the Second City Saint early. CM Punk again. Really found himself aligned, I should say intertwined with the Judgment Day dating back to the spring during his pursuit of the WWE Championship. Finn Balor even had a similar goal at one point in time. Both men were chasing Kevin Owens in the WWE title. Of course, Punk went on to win it and eventually through battle, respect was gained between CM Punk and Kevin Owens. We've seen that respect on the benefit Owens and Zayn in recent weeks. Six-man tag team victory for Punk, KO, and Sammy against the Judgment Day just a few weeks ago. Hell, last Monday night, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn picking up a huge win over Dominic Mysterio and AJ Styles in that tag team main event. A lot of that having to do with those two men looking to get even on behalf of CM Punk out of the events of Bad Blood. Oof! I'll tell you one thing, Kevin Owens might have buried his hatchet with CM Punk, gained a great respect for him after not one but two wars at Money in the Bank and SummerSlam this past summer. You saw Seth Rollins backstage earlier tonight, looked like he was trying to bury the hatchet with one Kevin Owens, but their issues run a little bit more personal after their battles earlier this year. Finn Balor over the top rope coming crashing down on CM Punk at ringside. Punk in trouble. Wet laid to waste here in Milwaukee. CM Punk came high out of the gate. And Finn Balor is matching his energy. Now sent right to those steel steps. And Punk just looking worse for wear at ringside. I'm sure Finn Balor wouldn't mind a count out victory. Anything to stick it to the second city saint. Maybe not. Balor's got something else in mind. Breaking the count here. And now is going back to the beatdown at ringside. Now Balor's got a chance to take out one of Monday Night Raw's premier superstars and send a message to the rest of the locker room saying you got to be done messing with the judgment day because this is what your fate lies if you do. So we may not like Balor, Priest, especially might not like Dirty Dom. They have been successful throughout 2024. What you can call a hostile takeover of Monday Night Raw. Championships across the group. Taking out guys like Roman Reigns. So many others. Oh man, CM Punk neutralizing Balor. At least momentarily, and now CM Punk using that pile driver to get back into this matchup. And I'll cross by to the outside. Balor slowing things down for a moment with that beatdown at ringside. CM Punk bringing a different en energy. Look at rev up his engines here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And not letting up as he is unloading on one half of the world tag team champions. Oh, hold on here. Finn Balor escaping the squared circle. And this guy trying to blow off the match with Punk. Oh, just go and see him Punk get with a cheap shot. Well, typical Judgment Day actions using any trick in the book to stick it to their opponents and get an edge. Balor and Priest, the reason that Jay and Jimmy Uso no longer welcomed here on Monday Night Raw. Banished them from Raw back in No Mercy last month. 
No matter where you look on the red brand, there is Judgment Day fingertips all over it. CM Punk has had about enough of it. Oh, no, oh, no, not a ringside. Damn, Balor dropping Punk right on his crown. These men holding no punches here tonight. CM Punk may be out cold. Referee John Cone just count to the three and end this thing. But CM Punk not going to be denied. I don't know, man. If I'm CM Punk, I might have stood down. Punk might be his own worst enemy here in Milwaukee. Balor instituting some massive punishment, but the second city state still has got something left in the tank. They don't call him the best in the world for nothing. Punk looking to remind the world why. Some huge punishment at ringside. But all of a sudden, CM Punk starts to rally here in the Pfizer Forum. Punk dropping AJ Styles with a GTS at the top of the show, only for Balor to come from behind. And now we have Balor and Punk crossing past one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the Monday Night Raw ring, both looking for the feather in the cap in the means of victory. On the top. Nice corkscrew. Punk just stacking the offense. One brutal maneuver after another. Balor off the reversal that time. CM Punk now sidestepping. One half of the World Tag Team Champions. Finn Balor on the shoulders. Go to sleep. Punk off the GTS. This one's not over yet. CM Punk in disbelief. Oh, hold on, hold on here. Well, this match is going on. Damian Priest is making his way down the aisle. The hell is he doing out here? Referee John Cone calling for the bell. CM Punk's gonna win this matchup by disqualification, but Damian Priest ambushing the Second City Saint. South of heaven. What was turning into one hell of a main event, now going A-wire. Just as we started the show, it looks like we will end it with Judgment Day surrounding chaos. Something's gotta give those son of a bitches. Hold on now. Here's Seth Rollins from behind. Rollins and Priest, you gotta assume we're finally separated in the backstage area earlier tonight. But now the flame once again reignited inside the squared circle, just where Rollins wants Damian Priest. Rollins does not forgive, he does not forget. Priest put him on the shelf for two months. Seth freaking Rollins is looking for his pound of flesh. Oh man, Priest sent to the outside. Here comes the visionary. Suicide dive sends Priest into the barrier. Milwaukee is loving the bedlam that is taking place in the middle of the Pfizer Forum. Seth Rollins has done some dastardly things throughout his career, but that doesn't mean he is absolutely free of charge tonight. He looks at Damian Priest guilty as charged for his actions back in the month of August. Clear it off the announce table. Damian Priest may be rocked off the suicide dive. Don't look down, Damian. I don't think you're gonna like the view. Pedigree for the announce table. And now what? Seth Rollins back. Oh, hold on here. Dominic Mysterio has got an unconscious Sami Zayn. He must have jumped him in the back. And I'm throwing him down like a victim, like bait. And now Rollins back inside the ring. The Intercontinental Champions out here. Rollins and Dom coming up blows. I think we need more than referee John Cone. We might need to empty all the Pfizer Forum and get the SWAT team in here to separate these superstars. Rollins and Dom coming to blows. John Cone can call for the bells all he wants. Nothing is going to stop these superstars from ripping each other apart. 
Milwaukee singing the battle hymn of Seth Rollins, but right now Dirty Dom is trying to stick it to the visionary. We have got another brawl on our hands as the bedlam continues here in the closing moments of Monday Night Raw. CM Punk and Finn Balor's main event going A-wire thanks to the arrival of Damian Priest. And now it has only gotten worse. Rollins and Dom, right where Rollins and Priest were brawling earlier tonight. The fight continues amongst the WWE Universe. And what about Dom just chucking Sami Zayn's lifeless carcass out in the aisle way? Must have ambushed him in the backstage area, threw him out here like a pawn, like a message to Rollins, saying this is what's next. Well, CM Punk is back to his feet inside the ring, seemingly just surveying the scene of everything that has happened since the South of Heaven. With the eyes obviously on Seth Rollins and Dirty Dom right now, as Rollins looking to pick apart the Intercontinental Champion for getting involved. This is not a match, ladies and gentlemen. This is just a fight all throughout the Monday Night Raw locker room, and you had to believe it was bound to happen. Rollins now eats familiar concrete floor. Well, now Dom's making his way back to the ring, eyeing up the man who knocked him out at Halloween Havoc, and here's Kevin Owens. Owens now from behind, saying, Dom, you want to ambush my best friend? I'll do the same to you. And hold on, AJ, St AJ Styles is here at ringside. Styles and Sia Punk are going out on the other side, but cameras on Kevin Owens and Dirty Dom. CM Punk and AJ Styles are making their way into the WWE Universe. All the while, Kevin Owens has got those steel steps. Dom eats them for Monday night dinner. The hell is going on? And there we go, AJ Styles and Punk finally getting some cameras on their situation. Oh no, surrounded by steel and concrete. For the love of God, something's gotta give here on Monday Night Raw. Somebody gain some order. Wait a minute. What the hell is this? You have gotta be kidding. Throughout all the chaos, throughout all the bedlam, what the hell is the game doing in Milwaukee? I cannot believe my eyes. The chief content officer of World Wrestling Entertainment, the man at the helm, the king of kings, the cerebral assassin, the game, Triple H, is on Raw. Security staff, we've finally gotten some order throughout the Pfizer Forum. But Triple H is marching to the squared circle nonetheless. We need answers. And we need a, re a resolution to all this chaos. War games. What? Two words that sound throughout this arena in the most shocking manner. Did he just say war games? I cannot believe my ears and I cannot believe my eyes. Saturday night, November 16th, the judgment day, AJ Styles, Owens, Zane, Rollins and Punk get ready for war games at Survivor Series.